Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. In the last video, we discussed the ideas of populations, the unknown population mean, and estimating the unknown population mean with the sample mean. Remember, we are working with the normal population distribution of the weights of bags of pretzels. As a reminder, a distribution represents the values the variable takes and how often it takes these values in our case the weights. In our example the population distribution of the weights of bags of pretzels were displayed in this bubble as an illustration. The normal curve below actually represents all the possible population values. We took a few samples from this normal population and found each sample's mean. Then we thought about taking many many samples and calculating many many sample means and we're interested in visualizing all these sample means on a histogram. I posed four questions about what the distribution of sample means might look like. Here are those questions. Pause here to recall your answers to these questions before continuing. To illustrate this concept, I will begin by setting the population mean weight of the bags of pretzels to be 16 ounces and the standard deviation of the population to be 5 ounces. The population mean of 16 ounces should make sense as certain bags of pretzels are called pounders. The standard deviation may be slightly large, but remember, this is just an illustration. Though it is unrealistic to set specific values for the population mean and standard deviation when they are unknown, at the end of the story, once you understand this idea, you will work with the one sample mean you take, you will know the sample mean is one of many that could have been obtained, and all those sample means can be visualized on a sampling distribution. Now, let us construct a sampling distribution in the statistical program Minitab. First, imagine my population has 100,000 values. We know the population of the bags of pretzels is much larger, but for the sake of time we will generate only 100,000 possible values of this population. We can see all those values in column C1. Let's produce a histogram of all these values. This histogram represents our population. Does this picture make sense to you? Think about how you would interpret this graph. Pause here to think about this. Okay, now I will take a sample from this population, exactly as I did in the last video. Here we will take samples of size 5. This is one sample of size 5. These are five randomly selected values from the population of weights. Now, I will take 15 samples at once. Do you see that all these samples are different? Do you think these samples will produce different sample means? Pause to reflect on this. In the same way, I generated 1,000 samples previously. In theory, the sampling distribution is built from all the possible samples size n, but our 1,000 samples will give us an approximate picture. Now, we are interested in finding the mean of these 1,000 samples. Minitab will help us produce a list of means for each sample stored in column C2 through C1001. Once I store this list of means in a column, I will create a histogram of the sample means. Do you see that this is the sampling distribution of the sample means that we selected? Pause here to really think about this. Let's compare the population histogram to the histogram of the sample means. To correctly compare these graphs, I set the x-axis of each histogram to be the same. Think about why I did this. What do you see? Keep in mind that the values represented in the population histogram are the 100,000 individual weights from the population and the values represented in the sampling distribution histogram are the 1,000 sample means taken by repeatedly sampling from the population. Remember the questions I posed about the sampling distribution? Pause here to evaluate and revise your answers. 
Let's look at an applet from the Rice Virtual Lab in Statistics. I will provide the link to the website in the comment box below this video. This applet visualizes each sample being taken and the mean that sample produces. Our population is at the top, which is the same population we just worked with in Minitab. When I click Animated, the applet shows a sample of size 5 taken from the population and then graphs the mean that the sample produces. Let's watch this a few times. I can simulate the 1000 samples I took in Minitab and the applet produces the sampling distribution in blue. Again, what do we see? Pause here to think about it. Let's go back and answer all of those questions I posed. So what is the shape of the sampling distribution? Our sampling distribution looks quite normal. What statistical value will be found at the center of the sampling distribution? Well, the mean of the sample means will be very close to the population mean. Remember my question from the last video about why the sample mean is a good estimate of the population mean? Well, one reason why is because of this answer. The sample mean is an unbiased estimate of the population mean because the mean of the sampling distribution of this statistic is equal to the true value of the parameter being estimated. In other words, the center of the distribution of x bar is mu. The mean of all the sample means is the population mean. Well, back to our questions. How will the spread of the sampling distribution compare to the spread of the population distribution? Well, when comparing the graphs, we see the sampling distribution is not as spread out as the population. Does the spread depend on a certain quantity? We will find out in the next video. In this video, we visualized the construction of the sampling distribution and answered most of our questions about the features of that sampling distribution. In the next video, we will find out what happens when we increase the sample size of each sample we take. In addition, since we know populations do not always follow a normal distribution, we will build the sampling distribution of the sample mean by sampling from an extremely non-normal distribution. Remember, if we understand these prerequisite topics and concepts, it will be that much easier for us to understand the concepts of confidence intervals. Thank you for watching.